Hey everybody, happy Thursday. It is our migraine strategy call day. I am Debbie Weidel. I am a certified migraine health coach specialist here to help you find your migraine freedom without having to use all the pills, all the quick fixes, all of the diets, everything that you've done over the years to try to end your pain. We're here to make it simple for you to help you through the process so that you can finally stop covering up your migraines, but actually end them. We're here to play offense today, not defense. And I'm so excited to have a special guest with me here today. Sarah is here. She is a graduate of the Freedom for Migraine Method program, and she is here to share her story with us today. So Sarah, thank you for being here. You're welcome. Glad to be here. Wonderful. So Sarah, I just totally lost where I had your info that I was going to share with everyone. There we go. So Sarah has an 11-year-old son, a six-year-old daughter. She is married been married for 12 years and you have been working full time since COVID from home. You lucky one. I love working from home as well. <laughs> so when I met Sarah, she was obviously having migraines. So Sarah, do you mind kind of walking us through your journey so we have a better understanding of what you've been dealing with over the years? Sure. Yeah. I can remember getting migraines probably for sure through high school probably even back into middle school, um, but they really started flaring up, um, I would say after college. Um, started working full-time professionally and traveling and, you know, with my job and mm -hmm. really started to notice like an impact like on my function. Um, yeah. So, you know, started uh, with prescription medications to try to help manage them and, um, then I had my kids and, um, you don't get to have a day off with, with a migraine when you have no. kids. So I found that the prescription medicines really wouldn't work because they would really knock me out or they would make mm -hmm. me not or, you know, whatever the side effect was. Um, and so I just was trying to like self-manage <laughs> my migraine. <laughs> definitely not easy. Absolutely. Absolutely. So you were obviously scrolling on Facebook one day. I'm assuming that's probably where you found us. Yes. And well, you, I to, you know, to see like what's new, you know, I hadn't really looked into my migraines um, in a couple of years. I, had, I had busy, was very busy with, with my daughter who has a lot mm -hmm. of medical needs. And um, we had gone through a particularly stressful time period with her. And um, my migraines, of course, flared up and I was having to call in my parents and, you know, people to cover for me while I was having my migraines um, to care for my kids. And we had gotten through that. And I said, well, let me just see what is new because I, I really have to finally address them because I was just sort of ignoring them. Like, you know, yeah. they'll just go away. They're just yeah. like this. You know? And it was just, it was just to the point where I was like, okay, I really need to take the time for myself and figure out how I can address these. And that's when I found your group. And I just want to unpack that a little bit. I love how you said that you were just kind of ignoring them because man, did I do that <laughs> big time for 10 years? It was, and I kind of thought it was because I had to have migraines. My mother had them. My sister had them. My grandmother had them. So I'm like, all right, I need to do my best to just kind of be like, had the tunnel vision mm -hmm. of when they happen, keep going. Cause there's nothing yeah. you can do about it. Right. And for you, you might've had some hope in the background that there was something you could do, but I think you were just tunnel vision focusing on your kids, you know, yeah. especially your daughter that was going through a rough time. It was like, I don't have time to deal with me. And I'm sure I'm just checking here to see who's watching right now. I'm sure a lot of the women that are on, oh, my phone's not going to cooperate. All right. I know there's a bunch of you watching, but for some reason, my phone's not going to let me pull it up. But anyway, I know a lot of you watching feel the same where we just push through. You know, we have so many things we think we have to do. And some of them, yes, we have to do. We don't have an option. You know, when your daughter was in her situation, you had to be there, you know, but there's some times I think that we think we have to be there. So we push through, we take the meds, we do the things. And really from, I know what you learned and what we teach in the freedom from migraine method that actually harms our health. It makes mm -hmm. us more inflamed. It makes the problem worse. So Hello, Leslie. Oh, there we go. Now I can see the names. Roseanne, Heather, Rhonda. Good to see everybody. Everybody give me a quick hi. Let me know how you're doing today. I'm so glad that you could join us. And if you have any questions for Sarah as we're talking, please 
pop them in chat right now. If I happen to miss them, because my phone decides to not show me comments, I'll make sure that we get to them later if we don't catch them during this call. But okay, so back to you, Sarah. So you found the Women's Migraine Freedom Group, you know, you kind of poked around for a while, and then you and I chatted. What made you decide after trying everything that you've tried that didn't work, just kind of masked your pain? Why did you decide to give this a try to see if this would help you? I mean, I had seen the the comments from the other graduates of your program, and they all like were beaming and happy and <laughs> talking about how they had gotten their migraines to, you know, be at, just in a good, they were in a good place, you know, mm -hmm. I'm not saying, you know, completely migraine free, but I was, I thought, well, I don't know what the secret is, but like, you know, I'm, I, I really want to see what this is all about because it was, you know, not prescription based. Mm -hmm. It was, you know, I knew it was going to be lifestyle, you know, making, making changes that way. And, but I was really curious about, you know, would that really work for me? You know? Absolutely. And, and I hear that from so many women, well, I've already made the lifestyle changes. I've already made the food changes. You're not going to be able to tell me anything that I don't already know. When you joined the freedom for migraine method, did you feel that we actually were able to tell you things that you didn't already know? Oh yeah. I thought I knew, um, I thought I knew a lot about, <laughs> you know, but I, I found out I, I was really missing quite a bit. Um, it was a lot of, um, I guess, basic level learning stuff. I'm like, why don't we learn this in school or, you know, this, this kind of basic stuff. Um, but yeah, I was, it was surprising to me, um, this, the information that I learned about myself too. Yeah. And one of the big things for you, you know, that we learned when we first started working with you was, and this is very common for so many women in this group. So actually everyone, let me know if you are someone that does not have your gallbladder, let me know in the comments right now, just say gallbladder. And then I'll know that, you know, you've had that taken out at some point in time. And Sarah, when I talked to you about this, I think it was on our initial call, we talked about it quite a bit that there really should be training. You know, if the doctor is going to give you have a surgery and take one of your organs they really need to talk to you about what you need to do for the rest of your life, because now you've lost something that was supposed to do a job, right? It wasn't like your gallbladder was just hanging out. Well, at the end, it wasn't doing well and probably hanging out, but normally your gallbladder has a function, right? So your doctors really gave you no information on how to continue to live after they took it out. I was like 21. I mean, even if they had, I probably wouldn't really pay, you know, it, but no, it was, and every doctor that I saw afterwards, you know, you fill out the health questionnaire and it says, yep, go ahead, my gallbladder out. And every doctor's like, oh, okay, you've had your gallbladder out. And it was, there was no ever conversation about it. Yeah. And that made such an impact into your migraines because it just, it is such a key integral part. And when you don't have a gallbladder, your liver has to do the job of the gallbladder. So now we're taxing your liver, which we found was something we really had to focus on with you. So being able to know your health history and know an individualized approach that we're going to help you with, even though we worked on a lot of things, like you said, that were lifestyle, that were basic, that we should be taught in school, we're still able to find that little missing piece for you <laughs> that really helped you get over the edge. Because you made a comment to me that food was a big part for you. Right. And we do talk quite a bit in the freedom from migraine method, how food is not the only part, <laughs> you know, food is only one, but for you, it happened to be something where you had to focus quite a bit on it. Didn't you? Yeah. I mean, once I realized, I mean, I had no idea, absolutely no idea that my gallbladder would have anything to do with my migraines mm -hmm. and just my, general. so the whole module that you have on that, that aspect was, was really big for me. Absolutely. And it helps you be able to uncover some foods that you know aren't really good for you, um, yeah. some foods that are not helpful. But when you and I were just chatting before we jumped on this call, I loved one thing that you said. Do you remember how long you've been graduated? It's been a few months now, right? At least. Uh, I want to say right around Thanksgiving, maybe before okay. Thanksgiving. Okay. So at least three months we're probably talking. So you commented that you really don't have to think about the program anymore. That's, you know, that's, when you graduate, you know, we're all still kind of like, okay, I need to do A, I need to do B, I need to do C, I need to make sure I got all the, the, my ducks in a row and do everything. But you've gone through so much healing 
because of not having the gallbladder working on the liver, gone through so much healing in your body that you can now just get up. It's like riding a bike. How does that feel just after a few months in? A lot of it is just, like I said, the lifestyle change. So I'm, I'm just, you know, I was a two Pepsi kind of day girl with Mm -hmm. one glass of water. And, you know, now that's totally different. So that's something I don't have to think about anymore. I just, I know that my body is getting much better hydration, for example, you know, it's just one small, tiny thing, but yeah, I mean, it's nice to just go about my day and not have to be constantly worried about before the program. I was constantly like, I never felt well. So it was like, what am I going to eat and Mm -hmm. thing? And now I just, it's amazing. And did those changes bother you to make? Like, are you just wishing right now you could go back to everything you were doing before? No, absolutely not. I, I know it's that um, reverse or that, that biofeedback where, you know, you start to realize what makes, what gives you, what makes your body not feel good. And mm-hmm. so then you, you don't even want it. And I remember early on in the program, you had said, talking about another graduate that said that they like craved, um, I don't know, spinach or, you know, yeah. something like that. Yeah. Oh, that's, that'll never be me, but you know, no, now I, now I need my vegetables and I don't, I just, I can't even go back to the way I ate before. I don't even want to. I love that. Cause I think that is one of the biggest worries. Like when we talk about food with anyone that's deciding if they want to jump in and do the work on finding their migraine freedom, you know, the, one of the biggest questions I get is, am I going to have to change my diet? Do I have to give up sugar? Do I have to stop alcohol? Do I have to, you know, get rid of these things? And while we do possibly get rid of some of those for a while, there's some that we can add back in, right? Mm-hmm. Depending on where we are in our health, there's some we can add back in, but there are others. And I love how you said it, that you just don't even care about anymore. It doesn't even phase you, you know, cause let's face it as much as we love sugar and I'm, I love sugar. I love ice cream. I love cookies. I can't sit here and say in any way, shape or form that they're good for us. <laughs> I just can't, but I can say they're good for me emotionally because I enjoy them, but <laughs> But I can't justify that they're going to make me a healthier person by eating them. But so it's good when we start craving other things and then we can enjoy those as treats, which is kind of the point I'm getting at. So amazing. Um, Thank you so much for being here, everyone. Hey, Lynn, how are you today? There's Valentina and Jolene is here. Christine is here. Heather's here. Brenda's here. My goodness, we've got quite a crew. Leslie, Thanks so much for being here, ladies. Again, if you have any questions for myself or for Sarah, please feel free to pop them down in chat. We try to make sure that when our amazing graduates come on, that they are giving you information that helps you, helps you make a decision about what the next step is that you are going to take. So fast forward, we know what you felt like before, kind of have a little idea of how you feel now, but tell me what your world looks like now in comparison to before we met. I mean, I didn't even realize that I was, I think when I first spoke with you, I said, you know, I don't know, I have maybe four migraines a a month, maybe I don't even remember. But now that I know what it feels like to feel healthy, Mm -hmm. I was having low level head pain probably like every day. And now I know it feels like to be completely pain free for a day. And that I remember the first couple of days I felt like that. I was like, this is amazing. (laughs) Yeah, it's definitely something you don't want to give up for sure. Yeah, now as soon as I get like a level one headache, I'm, you know, I'm back doing a couple things that, you know, a couple tools that I know about because I it just I'm like, oh, no, we're not we're not doing that, you know, and it's just I'm just much more in tune with my body, too, and how it's feeling and what it's telling me. So and that's the key. You know, we are here as the coaches. We have a team of 12 amazing women many of them who've gone through the Freedom from Migraine Method program themselves. And we all know what it feels like, you know, but our goal is to make sure that you have the tools that you can go ahead and ensure for the rest of your life, you don't have to have migraines. You know, we, we want to make sure it's not just a four month migraine freedom, that it is a lifelong migraine freedom, which is why it's so amazing to talk to you three months after the program, you know, where you're still feeling great. And you said, Every day you feel better and better. You know, your body just continues to heal. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And I have more energy to do, um, you know, things that I could never do before. You know, I've got like closets cleaned out that I hadn't gotten to in five. 
you know, like just things like that, that you don't even realize. And my husband's like, you know, it's a Saturday and he's looking at me like, what are you doing? You know, like, <laughs> <laughs> this isn't what you used to do. <laughs> yeah, what I used to do, but I guess it wasn't that. <laughs> exactly. So before we jump down, you mentioned something about travel. Yeah. What's your, what's your future plan? And would you have been able to do this six months ago? I definitely, so we're just kind of in the phase of um, exploring planning a trip with, with, you know, the two kids, which is, you know, going to be quite an undertaking because they're both not travelers, but anyway. <laughs> um, yeah, no, it's just the, um, the idea of taking a trip um, hasn't even entered my mind in probably at least six years. You know, so the fact that I am even thinking about it and planning about it, wondering, you know, how could we do it? Um, you know, just because my daughter has some special circumstances, so it's not, you know, we can't just like hop on a plane, right. but um, just the excitement to kind of have the freedom to, to do something like that is, is really exciting. I love it. I love it. Well, I can't thank you enough for being here today. And I know that everyone watching gained so much hope from this because again, Sarah knows, I know everyone else has been through the freedom from migraine method. We all know what it feels like to not have hope. We all know what it feels like to think that there is nothing out there that's going to help, that you literally have tried it all. Um, if I could tape <laughs> that little piece of conversation for every single person I talk to, it's all the same. You know, you guys give me the laundry list of everything you've tried, you know, why you don't think this particular program will work for you, but it works for everyone else. You know, it's the same conversation, but Sarah, you took that leap. You took that chance and look at you now. It is so nice to see that smile on your face <laughs> and watch you just enjoy life. So as we wrap up here, is there anything that you would like to say to all the women in this group who are just sitting there still in pain, trying to mimic what everyone else is doing in the group and just pick up little pieces of what's going on? What would you say to them to give them some hope? I would say that it's, I mean, it was uncomfortable for me to prioritize myself or even think of myself as a, as as, as much priority as my kids, like, you know, but, um, if you think about it, that you're doing it for your family and you're doing it for yourself to prioritize yourself and your health and to learn, um, learn the tools that you have to offer. I mean, it's, it's amazing. It's, it's life-changing and everybody really does deserve to have a pain-free life. Absolutely. Those are perfect words to end on. Again, thank you so much for being here today. Everyone that is watching, thank you so much for being here. I don't see any questions, but I will 100% make sure that I keep an eye on this post today as well as Valentina. So if there are any questions, feel free to reach out in here. Valentina's also dropped her private direct message link. She is my key for getting everything that you need in this group. <laughs> so if there is a training you need, if there is a scorecard you need, anything that you need, Valentina is the one. So make sure you click on her name. And I'm always in that group chat with her. So I am in there monitoring, but she is your best avenue for all things moving you forward to migraine freedom. So again, everyone, thank you for being here today. And we will see you. Hold on. Let me check my calendar. Let's see you next week. I think we're going to get a bonus next week. We are. I'm going to see you ladies twice next week. So please make sure you join me Tuesday evening at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Laura is going to come on to share her story. Laura is a school teacher. So we are doing this at the evening time because obviously she can't really tell her kids she needs to go and do an interview in the Women's Migraine Freedom Group during the day. So we're going to bring that to you at night. And then Thursday, the second, we will be chatting with Lisa. So I'm super excited for those talks next week for our migraine strategy call. So make sure you join us. Here is to your migraine free week. And if we can do anything for you, please just reach out. Have a great day.